Why, hello there everybody and welcome to uh, this video. So today we are going to be discussing 3D resin printers, the settings that I use for my particular printer, and some things that you can look out for to actually have successful prints. We all know that whenever you 3D resin print and it doesn't come out right and it fails, now you know how your parents feel. But the good thing is, with a few changes, you can make it all better. And one of the first steps is... Gamzo's Patreon! Damn you Gamzo, you son of a... Check this out, boys. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six tanks for you. All pre-supported STL files for you to download and print, including all the infantry that you see here. That's right, an entire army for you to print that's pre-supported for only 15 bucks. And of course, not to forget the Buttermilk Bob model. Damn you, Gamza! You son of a bitch! So, everything that you see here for $15 on my Patreon, and for this April, we're also going to include even more. This entire terrain set. This thing is badass. This is enough terrain for an entire table. And even more than that, we're including a base set to match. Everything that you just seen will be $15 for this April. This is an incredible deal that is likely to rotate out by the end of this month. Oh yeah, okay. Now, I gotta set this tone a little bit here. Number one, this has been a big request from my patrons over there. You guys voted for the, a video about 3D printing. Here it is. Number two, you guys keep asking me what are my settings for my 3D printer. I don't really want to give you that, although I will in this video. And the reason why is this. We most likely have a different resin 3D printer, but at the same time, we most likely use different resin. Even if you and I had the same machine, the settings very well may not be the same because the resin may be different. And and also vice versa. Just because we use the same resin and you have a different machine, the settings are still likely to be different. So I don't like to just answer the question, tell you here's my settings, expect you to dial them in and somehow they work. However, the goal for this video is to help you find the settings that you may need for your 3D printer and the resin that you're using. Okay, so the story is this, you just bought your resin 3D printer, you want to dial this bad boy in, you can't wait to print an entire army, but first you got to make sure that you even know what you're doing. So download this matrix here. I'm I'm gonna leave a link down below in the description so that way you guys can just click on it, download it for free, and then you're gonna throw it into whatever slicer software that you have, and then you're gonna slice this bad boy. But first and foremost, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this a few times, so that way we can put one on each corner, so basically you have four of them. Now, why am I telling you to do four and not just one? It's because you can put one on each corner, and this will also tell you if your bed is leveled or not. If one of them is peeling, and it's not coming out too well, and it's not sticking but the ones on the other side are sticking just fine it's most likely because your bed is not leveled so instead of trying to throw in some giant monstrous creature and print it for nine hours only to figure out that it failed like three hours in because it wasn't adhered to it correctly this will save you a lot of time so not only is it going to tell you that your bed is leveled or unleveled at the same time it's going to tell you if your resin settings are good or not all right, so my settings are not done through the slicer software. Instead, it is done on my actual 3D printer itself. So this is where I dial in my settings. These are the settings that already work for me, but we're gonna play around with these a little bit so that way I can show you what to kind of look out for if things don't work out for you. One important tip is that if you go to the website of the manufacturer of your resin, they oftentimes have different listings down for different 3D printers and what they recommend for exposure times. And this is a good place to start with your settings. All right, so these boys print pretty fast. Number one, we're gonna be looking for any peeling. We don't see any here, which means our bed is leveled. All right, next up is to test your initial exposure time. So if it's too high, these things are gonna be very hard to get off your build plate and they could even crack or break, which means that your initial exposure time or your bottom layer exposure time is far too high and you should probably start experimenting with lowering that considerably. Perhaps around 30 seconds is where you can start. But keep in mind that these prints are very light, so if you're gonna print something that's much heavier, you may wanna increase the initial exposure time to ensure that it sticks to the bed very well. For large things like tanks and stuff, I use around 45 seconds to 50 seconds. For infantry type models, little soldiers, I use around 25 seconds. All right, so for the validation matrix, let's keep this nice and simple. What are you supposed to be looking for on this test print? 
Alright, so let's take a look at this infinity symbol inside the middle of this test matrix. Alright, now look at where the two points meet. We want this to not be like your sex life. We actually want to see some touching here. And if these points are like you, then it means that the resin is underexposed because the two points are not touching each other. And that means that you normally need to increase your exposure time. Now, let's look down below at these little lines going on here. Let's say that the top row are male connectors and the bottom row are female connectors. What you're going to want to see here is the ability for the male connectors to socket into the female connectors nice and snug, unlike your sex life. If you find that this whole test matrix looks kind of swollen, kind of puffy, and these two points in the middle look like they're really merging into each other, and these lines look puffy like they won't fit together or anything else like that, that means that you have an overexposure problem going on here. So think of it this way. Underexposure is like under eating. You become skinny and weak and small. Overexposure is like overeating. You begin to swell up, you get bigger, and all your definition disappears. You simply want a nice happy medium where you can get as much detail as you can without underexposing your miniatures or whatever the hell it is that you're printing. However, I want to tell you this and this is incredibly important that I don't see many people talking about and that is this. This test matrix is not perfect. It only gives you a good ballpark of where you are at when it comes to your resin printer and its settings with the resin that you are currently using because this matrix right here is at 2.5 seconds exposure time and I have a model that I do know for a fact prints well and the supports work and it will still fail with these settings because it is slightly underexposed and then you still run into failures which means this is a good place to start but it's better to actually start off with a slight overexposure and then work your way down rather than start with an underexposure and work your way up because an underexposed model means most likely a print failure which means more cleanup an overexposed model means that the model most likely printed successfully it's just a pain in the ass to get it off those supports and it's over hardened and it lost some detail but there shouldn't be any cleanup that you have to do inside the vat so it's better to start with a slightly overexposed model and slowly work your way down until it's nice and crisp and then you can stop right there rather than jumping all the way down underexposing something then you run into tons of failures when it comes to the supports and the model printing and then you have tons of cleanup to do nobody likes doing that so what I would do is I would use this test matrix to give a just ever so slight overexposure setting on it and then go test Test print a model that you know where the supports work. Once you test print that model, you can see, okay, how much detail did you actually lose? And how much detail are you trying to get out of the model? And then from there, you can slowly work your settings downward on the exposure time until you can finally get a nice successful print while also maintaining enough detail to satisfy your needs. All right, now the model that you've been seeing me test print is actually available on my Patreon if you guys are interested. Obviously, at the beginning of the commercial, you know that you get an entire army for 15 bucks. But anyways, let's talk about this. The first model that you've seen that failed, this was actually at a 1.8 exposure setting. It was way underexposed, and that's why some of the supports failed. However, once we bumped it up to 2.5, we ended up getting this miniature here, which is still slightly underexposed because I think one, of the, one or two of the supports failed. There's a little bit of an indentation on the top of the head and a little bit of deformation on the backpack as well. It's still a playable and usable model. The details are still fine on it, but I already know that the sweet spot for my printer and the resin that I use for it is at 2.8 seconds. Yours could be way less or yours could be a little bit more. It just depends, again, on your settings with the resin that you're using and the printer that you're using as well. So again, work your way at the top going downward so that way you're not going misprint, misprint, misprint and you have to clean up the vat constantly because you don't want any pieces at the bottom of that vat because then you could damage your FEP sheet and possibly your screen. So overexpose the model a little bit more and then work your way down because again, I would rather have an overexposed fat puffy looking model then half a model and the other half is stuck to my FEP sheet and now I gotta clean everything. So as you can see, your supports could very well be working. It's just a matter of your exposure times is what causes them to fail. Okay guys, I think this pretty much explains it. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will have more for you later.